Hi everyone, it's been a while. I wanted to make another video concerning the Flat Earth and I wanted to show a lot of people the information that's pretty much in, hidden in plain sight. I wanted to bring up the the causes of earthquakes and how it says the radioactive decay generates the heat energy which ultimately powers movements of the Earth's rocky tectonic plates and the same heat engine that produces earthquakes is the driving force raising the world's great mountain ranges. If this uplift did not take place, the relentless force of erosion would reduce the Earth's landscape to a single flat plain. Now that's where it becomes quite a bit of an issue for the globe model because the globe model is a ball. Now how can a ball become a single flat plane because of tectonic plates not working. You see folks, the information is out there and they, the people just deny it. Now, now when people get confused with the term level or flat, flat earth, level plane, is the only, only refute is that how can it be flat because we have hills and slopes and mountains? Well, yeah, we have hills, slopes, and mountains because of, well, tectonic plates. Now, if you look at it again, this doesn't prove that the ball earth has curvature. All it is is that there is uplifting tectonic plates making these hills and slopes and mountain ranges. It does not it does not equal the the tectonic plates here which even in the diagram shows a flat level plane I mean just because it has hills and slopes and mountain ranges because of these tectonic plates doesn't mean that it's a that it's a ball and like it says right here if this uplift did not take place, the relentless force of erosion would reduce the Earth's landscape to a single flat plane. Meaning, if, there, if it wasn't for these tectonic plates in the lithosphere, they should, they should just start renaming this stuff to lithoplane. I mean, if it wasn't for the tectonic plates, this level plane here would be a single flat surface. A single flat plane. Now let's look at that again. How can a ball become a single flat plane because of the loss of tectonic plates and earthquakes? It doesn't make any sense. It only makes sense on a flat earth plane. I mean that's that's what it is. People want to get technical on the terminology. Well there it is. The earth is a, le a flat level plane where the surface measures flat at every angle. Now, look at this. This is the the side view from the in, from the inner of the crust, and looking at the water and the mountain ranges. And it's very interesting in what they also say in Britannica, because this is also from the Encyclopedia Britannica website. Um, you can see that I clicked it from here. I just made it bigger. But it's really interesting what this very well known. Uh, scientific information website you know people use this for school papers and everything it's very interesting to see I mean to hear what they have to say at 57 seconds and to the rest of the video listen a very large percentage of the earth's most devastating earthquakes volcanic eruptions and mountain building processes occurs at the boundaries of tectonic plates because of plate tectonics, the surface of the Earth is divided into continents and ocean basins, caused by differences in the thickness and composition of the continental and oceanic crust. The continents have a crust that is composed of granite rock, which is lighter and stronger than the Balsitic ocean floor. The continental crust is 30 to 40 kilometers thick, while the oceanic crust is only 6 to 7 kilometers thick. The extra buoyancy of the continental crust causes it to float higher in the mantle, and this is what accounts for the difference in level of the two principal kinds of Earth's surface. Did you hear that? The extra bo in the mantle in level of the two principal kinds. This is what accounts for the difference in level 
of the two principal kinds of Earth's surface. Let's hear that again. This is what accounts for the difference in level of the two principal kinds of Earth's surface. There you have it, folks. I mean, how can, how can a ball without the Earth's crust tectonic plates and earthquakes become a single flat plane? There it is. You also heard it from the video. And I can... All right, this is a really quick observational experiment. Uh, this is a globe you're probably familiarized with. It has its textures on the mountains and everything. And I have printed out the USGS documentation here where if the sublift did not take place, the relentless force of erosion would reduce the Earth's landscape to a single flat plane. Now, let's look at this again. If the mountains here the tectonic plates stop pushing up, these mountains would actually have this stop, this picture here, the uplifting force, um, and should really not become a single flat plane, but instead a, a solid, you know, smooth ball of water. And it, it, it doesn't say that. So this is actually a ball that I got from Walmart, you know, Batman vs Superman cost me a dollar, pretty cool. And here is the ball, the blue sphere. If the tectonic plates on a ball were actually to stop working, it should actually look like this. But instead, it says it's a flat plane. Now, I even went ahead and I printed out another, not not another, but I I got another ball, and I put to perspective that if this whole entire uplifting force stopped working on a ball because on a ball in the heliocentric model the core is pushing in all directions so if this uplifting force in all directions would have stopped completely it should really look like a like a deflated more like a disc but this doesn't come out to a completely two-sided disc because it'll be the front and the back of course of the ball but uh, another way would be the disc a CD it'll be a two-sided a two-sided disc really because of the ball the uplifting force stops this ball would just come together and create one two-sided two-sided disc or maybe like a CD something like that but right here it says it's a flat plane I can come back here into the NASA document that I've heavily put in all of my videos uh, the NASA definition of the linear aircraft model and we can go back to page 30 36 in the concluding remarks is that the aircraft the matrices for the rigid rigid aircraft of constant mass flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat non-rotating earth and if you look here it says the equations are derived from nonlinear six degree of freedom equations that's the movement of aircraft in the air um, if you haven't seen my other videos I have three of them and one of them goes into detail with the attitude indicator which is the gyro compass um, I also have another document from NASA that's been unclassified, aerospace classification. Now when we do a search for the word flat, uh, you'll be surprised of how many times it's in here. It's in here five times. Now the this is actually a document for a camera on an aircraft. And it says, envision a camera system oriented as shown in figure B1. B1, meaning this is where the aircraft is, and this is the ground. Now, now here's the, with the Cartesian coordinate system whose XY plane defines the ground plane of a flat Earth. Okay, why would they make a camera that wants to 
pivot around an aircraft to have it be level with a flat earth. See the information is out there folks. Here's the here's the aircraft and a camera and even here where G and the line above this indicates is that the vector from the camera niter point to any ground point on a flat earth. So this is the aircraft with its six degree of freedom equations. This is the six degree axis, the, the whole, the banking, the rolling, the pitch change, everything in the aircraft in free space with the camera on the bottom to take pictures of a flat earth. It's just more and more information put together out there pushes forward the flat earth model. And I know what the naysayers out there always say is like, oh, that's just baloney. They told us in grade school that we have to make fun of the people that think it's flat. They were cavemen. Um, I mean, it, it gets ridiculous. I mean, they even have the people on the YouTube channel, the Turkish, the Turks or something like that, some kind of news channel on there. They have a little caveman dressed up and says that the ice walls are all the way up to space or something. He, those guys are really ignorant anyway. But, um, let's see. We can also uh, go to what, um, the Illinois. I mean, Illinois, the study says that the study says Illinois is second flattest state on the mainland. Now again, how can we have flat on a ball? Now, now here it is. Dobson was right finding half of the Illinois to be flat by using a formula that broke states into small sections and then analyzed the elevation data in those plots. Illinois beat out North Dakota, Louisiana, and Minnesota for the distinction of being America's second flattest state. Kansas, despite its reputation for hill-less plains, was merely the seventh flattest. West Virginia was the least flat. And right here, Illinois owes its flat land to glaciation, said Richard Berg, interim director of the Illinois State Geological Survey. That's why we have some of the best farmland in the world. It's flat. Okay, now let's go on even further. Kansas. Kansas is flatter than a pancake. This is a study um, in the usu.edu, geogeomorph Kansas HTML. Now, what they did here is they did the same thing. They measured it out, and they got all the information. And what they did was also the materials and methods. They actually went and purchased a well-cooked pancake from a local restaurant, the International House of Pancakes. I don't know if any of you have heard of that place, but they do make some pretty darn good pancakes. And what they did was they did a lot of measuring. They, you can see here from the, the side, the figure two pancake cross-section surface being digitized. They digitized the, the pancake and found that Kansas, through that, was flatter than a pancake. Now, I made this diagram a little bit bigger because it's pretty small there. You can see that here's the pancake, the, di the, the digitization, sorry about that. Here it is, digitized pancake. And what they did with Kansas. So it's flat. Let's see. And we can just go on and on with this, and I know the naysayers are still out there saying, oh, that's silly, uh, we were taught as a toddler to make fun of flat earthers because we have science. Okay, well, let's just keep on going. We can go to uh, something I wanted to bring up, something I'm do done with, but I have to go back because people just keep on being annoying. And you know what, might as well just go to the website. All right, the honeymoon packages, here we are. 
there it is Hawaii and over here we have the island of Maui this is Hawaii Beach on the beach you're pretty much a few paces from the ocean there and here is the island of Maui and there is the other one it's Kau Kaulave I forget how to pronounce that <laughs> Kaulave now we can right click and go to save as and it says the Maui sunset romance and we're going to plot this out but already I have made a diagram for it Kahulave elevation is 1483 feet which is this island right here they're on the beach here looking at the island of Maui over here Kahulave is right there so it's an elevation of 1483 feet from Hawaii Beach and it's a total of 46.36 miles point A to point B is 74.61 kilometers or 46.36 miles now with a spherical trigonometry of a sphere of 24901 miles in circumference it at 46.36 miles is a 1433.25 foot drop of curvature now people are telling me that my math on my curve chart is not correct and it actually is I can actually come in here and put in any number for instance let's say it's uh, 1000 I know it's down there but you can see that 1000 here 128, 128, 1000 here, 128, 128. The system works. The equation on the curve chart is 100%, but people keep on telling me that it's wrong. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back and look at the miles, 46.36. 46.36. That is 1000 433 feet and this is the the decimal point in miles okay now let's go back and bring up AutoCAD and we're going to go back and make sure they haven't changed the radius yet so it's 39 59 miles for the Earth's radius here we are and then here's the map and the elevation and from Wikipedia and Google 1483 feet now that our data is pretty accurate we're gonna start plotting this thing so making a radius of 3959 gonna start plotting this thing and if you've never used this program before, it is AutoCAD Civil 3D 2016. And we're going to do the plotting of a curvature drop on top of a ball and looking out towards that ocean. Basically, the people will be looking out in that direction. Okay? If you've never seen any of my videos before and new, you probably know this already but there it is we're gonna zoom in a little bit those people are looking in this direction 46 miles point 36 and you can see that's very very small and we're gonna drop it to the curve okay and we're gonna get a dim linear a linear dimension just to verify that there it is point 2714 and my Excel sheet and chart say it's 0.2714 it's correct okay and it works just learn how to make the Excel chart now here is the other factors that come in here people 
like to say that, well, you didn't take account the elevation of the viewer and then the island. Well, look at the viewers. They're only a few steps away from the ocean, so I can just walk down there a few paces, be in the water, and that mountain range is not, I mean, that island is not going to disappear. You just walk down there and it's not going to make the any difference. So, so 1,483 feet, I have to convert that to miles. Get my calculator here. One four eight three divided by fifty two eighty. It's point two eight zero eight seven. Okay, that represents the top of the mountain. That represents the elevation, 1483. And we're actually going to make a six foot man stand at the end. And that is 0 0.00136. Well, it's 1136, sorry about that. That's six foot, that represents a person standing six foot tall. This is going to be the line of sight. To the tip of the mountain. Change the color here. Now that yellow line represents the line of sight, and the blue is the water. So here we have the, the guy, or the lady, looking in that direction, and let's see how far it is before it hits the water. And you can see that there's a lot of curvature in the way hiding look at that how can how can anybody see that entire mountain range with that whole bulge of water in the way and if you look at the at the math the foot drop is 1433 and the elevation is 1483 so that island back there does not look like it's 50 feet tall it looks like it's the whole entire thing you can see here you have a few up and down here on the mountain so 50 feet can be like up here where my mouse is but sitting here and telling me or telling yourself that you're looking at this island from this far of a distance and that it's a mirage it's kind of crazy because we have too much of this going on now and it's it's not a circumstance now because circumstances have completely now been thrown out the window it comes way too often to be a hologram a mirage 
Now, we go back and look at the at the round earth. Just look at how much is in the way. Look at that. That much. There's hundreds and hundreds of feet of curvature of the water in the way of this island. And then it's only 50 feet. Point zero nine zero zero nine four. It's 50 feet. Fifty feet. There it is. Point zero nine nine zero zero nine four. Point zero zero nine four times fifty two eighty, which is a mile. That's forty nine feet. That's not fifty feet, folks. That's the entire island. And I guess that's it for today. I'll leave the comments open. I'll have you know, everything, I'll leave everybody to comment, you know, see if they come up with something different. Again, you can do this whole diagram at home. I supplied already the, the math for it. And have a good day. this out, astronaut Scott Kelly tweeted this photo to all of us here, remaining on terra firma on the Earth, 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 remaining on terra firma on the Earth. Kelly's been in space for nearly a year and says this is one of the best sunrises he's seen. And, you know, he's seen a lot. The International Space Station circles the Earth 16 times a day. That means 16 sunrises and sunsets every day. In his only one-on-one -on -one interview with Fox News, Scott Kelly told our Elizabeth Pran how he feels about the last week he'll spend on the International Space Station.
much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.